Hello, 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 and welcome back to some more room, 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 factory, factory, factory. Rooms. On today's episode, we finally have Azura with us. Yeah, she was oh, busy hello. last time. Yes, hello, I am Azura. Do you want to go skateboards? Speaking of skateboarding, that's what my D&D uh, &D character did back when I played D&D &D last Monday. That session was kind of crazy, but it went pretty awesome. I also wanted to talk about that in the last episode, but you weren't around. Oh, I see. Yeah, so like... The party was, I think it was like, uh, halfling dwarf, I think. Half, halfling, half dwarf. Uh, another, I think, halfling? Very, very short, uh, character, anyway. <laughs> uh oh. And there was, and there were two tiefling bards. <laughs> Very different types of uh, bard, I have to say that much at least. So we get all gathered together and we get our first mission. There's some uh, hooligans who like to go down and terrorize one of the local bards. And we gotta put a stop to them. It's like, alright, sure, cool, fine. Get down there, everyone gets a drink. There's a stage right in the middle of the bar. So I'm like, alright. I'm gonna go perform. So my character uses basically a guitar, and the shield is a skateboard. <laughs> like the shield has wheels on it. You know, Impressive. like Terrace of the Kingdom. Uh, if you say so. It was your idea originally, Azura. <laughs> I know. I'm trying not to take credit for it. <laughs> What, you don't want to be associated with such a dumb idea? I don't want people to know that, you know, I had to come up with that idea for you. My... I want people to think that you're creative. Please, I'm not creative. That's why I'm... That's why I have 123 episodes of Rune Factory 2. Oh, also, speaking of 100 or so episodes of Rune Factory... Since I've been doing three years on this channel, at some point I reached my 1,000th episode, and I didn't even celebrate it. Oh. How did that happen? I mean, two episodes a day every day, it's bound to happen eventually. <laughs> I guess. So, Hulums come in, my character doesn't make the perception check to uh, be able to see them, but the rest of the party does. One party member casts Calm Emotions on a chunk of uh, the bar patrons. So, I was, you know, rocking out on stage, and then everyone gets all really calm. So I cast Enthrall on, like, everyone in the bar <laughs> to bring their attention back to me. And this also includes a few of the, um, a few of the hooligans who decide that they want to come up on stage and try to beat me up. <laughs> One of them climbs up, takes my guitar, baps me with it. Whatever, not much damage. Another one comes up, punches me, a little bit of damage. Third one comes up, punches me, a little bit of damage. So I'm like, I, right, this is perfect. I got all of them right where I want them. Uh, so I cast... So on my turn, I cast Thunder Wave, a 15-foot cube that deals... Let's see, I upcast it, so that was 3d8 thunder damage on everyone within the cube. If they fail their uh, saving throw, and if they fail their fail their saving throw, they also get pushed back 10 feet. Uh -huh. So of the three ruffians that came up on stage, 
Well, actually, there were four ruffians that came up on stage. The DM realized later that another one had also gone hit with enthrall. <laughs> so of the four of them that came up on stage, I insta-killed three of them and intimidated the last one to give me my guitar back. <laughs> Because he was the only one that actually made the save to not get shunted away. That guy starts running away. So I take out... So I take out my uh, little hand crossbow. Fire at the guy. And the DM is like the sort of person to be like... Alright, that, that works. How do you want this to be done? So, you know, I do a bit of narration that I basically 007 style. I fell off of this stage, uh, shot the guy in the spine, and landed in a crowd surf. <laughs> and that's how my character got four kills in that session. One of the others managed to one-shot another one of the hooligans, and the other two didn't kill any of them. So the current kill tally is uh, 4 to 1 to 0 to 0. <laughs> so I'm in the lead, so I'm winning. That's how it works for D&D, right? I'm winning? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Plus, I put on a good show for the people, so you know, priorities. We. Yes. We also had like two of the players taking notes the whole time. <laughs> like, I don't know if they had agreed that they would both take notes, but they were both taking notes. <laughs> Also, it's a good thing I decided to bring a few extra miniatures along, because uh, we didn't really have enough miniatures for all of the important characters. I think what? the rest of the players used dice in place of miniatures. They each just like put down like a d20 <laughs> to represent their character. Like, I had a mini for my character, I had a mini for the bartender, I had a mini for... The the uh, bouncer outside, and I had a uh, mini for how now. See so, you now, everything's good. I heard of that one hurt. Uh, probably because I picked one up at some point. Or it's supposed to be that one right there. Claire. One of the two. It, it's fine, it's fine, it's gonna be fine, it's fine. It's like you're out of materials, except for your replacement potion. Yeah, I can still make more potions. I only gained one pharmacy level from all of that. Wow. <laughs> I can totally sell this. But anyway, yeah, D&D 112 might be some other D&D &D or board game related thing, I don't know, on Saturday, another one on Monday. 
I joined the Discord server for, you know, local uh, queer folk who want to get together to do events and stuff. And there's been talk about, like, going to the beach over the summer. <laughs> Not, like, you know, British Columbia beach. Just, like, a lake. <laughs> but still. I see. See, it should be fun. So if we do wind up doing a nice board game meetup, maybe I can bring the party box. We can have some real fun. Oh gosh, I went to the local uh, board game meetup was it last Monday? Which is more or less how I got introduced to this D&D uh, &D meetup. And <laughs> when I mentioned that I brought along a tea box to play, apparently the person I was talking to thought that I said party box, like toilet. See, and this is what you need to enunciate. I was trying to. It's called having a speech impediment. Yes, that's why you need to enunciate, because you have a speech I was impediment. trying to enunciate. But the person didn't understand what I was saying until I said, you know, like a celebration. But I think the strange thing about it is that they were completely fine with... Me bringing along a potty box. Yeah, that, okay, I'll admit that that part is a little bit weird. <laughs> oh, potty box? Yeah, that sounds like fun. <laughs> like, like, no hesitation whatsoever. <laughs> like, I think you, you know, jumping on the enunciation train... That's kind of like the side tangent to this whole thing. Yeah, unfortunately though, uh, both of these separate groups meet at the same time on Monday. I don't know why. Huh. Apparently everyone in town is only free on Mondays. Hi. Oh, right. Yesterday I made so many phone calls and connections and blah blah blah. And the day before, <laughs> there was shopping. So... I don't know how much it's been uh, shown on episodes, but Azura always complains that... to say that my internet is really bad, and I mean, truth be told, the internet is usually good, it just... Sometimes it will just flat cut out for no supposed for no good reason, and that is pretty bad. <laughs> oh, so I decided to take advantage of the Telus. Uh, I, I always want to call it uh, fire water, but no fiber wire. <laughs> fiber wire. If that's been. Uh, Put through my entire apartment building. Alright, see. So if that's going through the building, so they're all like, hey, everyone who's in the building can get, you know, 
super high speed TELUS internet for decently cheap because we won't have to, you know, work really hard to put a wire to your house because it's already in the building. So I said, you know what, I'll sign up for that. Or at least, no, I thought, hey, maybe I should sign up for that. So I went and looked up what, like, what it would cost to get, and it's like, okay, so I'll pay a little bit more a month, but supposedly, I'll go from about 85 down speed, 15 up speed, to a thousand and a thousand. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a change. And it's supposed to be super reliable, but it's hard to really know if it is or not. I just know that it's supposed to be reliable. Well, I'll have to see. On if it is or not. <laughs> I see. So, well, I called up the person, and they are like, Oh yeah, we're doing, you know, like, we're signing people up for it, and we're gonna be, you know, going back to the building at such and such time today. Give me your unit number, I'll stop by your place, and we can discuss this. I'm like, okay, sure. It's like, okay, they'll be here like 2.30, it's currently like 1.20, I can do a recording and then meet up with the person. I mean, I'm, I'm there thinking like it's probably going to be, you know, they get to the building at 2.30, talk to everyone for about 10 minutes each, it might not be till 3 or 4 that they actually get to me, but even if I'm one of the earliest on their list, I have enough time to film an episode before they get here. You understand my train of thought? with that? I think so. So I went to record an episode, and partway through there's a knocking at my door. Uh, yeah, they came by at like, 2.10. <laughs> Talked to the person, blah blah blah, everything went well except for the part where I forgot what uh, internet turns why. Uh, as part of, like, the consultation sign-up process, they have to get uh, proof of the customer's consent to pay for the internet. Because it's an in-person meeting, there's no, you know, uh, necessary paper trail. Someone could get the internet, use it for a month, get their first bill, and say, Oh, well, I never uh, agreed to pay this price. And then they would have an issue. So you do a phone call, have it be recorded, it's like, hey, like, this is exactly the same thing we just talked about, I just need you to say I consent. So like, okay, yeah, cool, totally. And part of the call, the person had said that I'd be getting a uh, one gigabit download and upload speed, except I misheard them slightly because the phone reception wasn't that great, Either despite the fact or because of the fact that we are like, you know, five feet away from each other. And I had heard, oh yeah, you'll have one gigabyte <laughs> uh, download and upload speed. I'm like, wait, hold on, wait, wait, wait. I thought I was supposed to get a thousand. Why am I getting one gigabyte? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I darted over to my computer, checked it out, and then realized, oh no, he'd said one gigabit. That is a thousand megabit, because they are measured in megabits, not gigabits. Because <laughs> I'm so used to, like, storage space being basically accounted for in terabytes instead of gigabytes anymore. One terabit internet would be huge. Um... <laughs> other than that, everything went well on that side. And then I, uh, you know, messaged with someone from my current internet service provider to talk about getting this shut off before I have to make another payment. So I'm getting the new internet on Monday. Before I have to go out for any special meetings or anything, whatever. So new internet on Monday, old internet will be out, I think it was next week, Thursday or Friday will be my next, my last day. So I will have a few days of potential double internet, but I don't think I'll really utilize that. 
but there is overlap, so I'm not going to be going like a day or two without internet. <laughs> I can't believe you're not going to have double internet. I'm going to have double internet, I'm just not going to use it. Yeah, that's what I mean, you're not going to make use of it, it's just like, oh. Also, as part of, like, the sign-up package or whatever for signing on to this internet, uh, I'm also going to be getting a few extra perks, uh, supposedly free of charge. I'm going to be getting an, uh, Alexa. I think. It's either an Alexa or an Amazon Echo that the person had said. Either way, I'm not really interested in it. I'll probably just leave it, you know, unplugged. I talk too much to have voices starting to talk back to me. <laughs> I mean, and that two-sentence horror that I, uh, showed Yes, earlier, I know. Is... Yeah, I'm, I'm saying it for the thing. For the video. Yeah, my Amazon, uh, was it, my Alexa, uh, started speaking to me today, but I didn't say anything first, or something. No, no, no. I heard my Alexa say, okay, from the other room. But I'm home alone and didn't say anything. It's not just that the Alexa is talking, the Alexa is responding to a request. Yeah. That's what makes it. You want it? You want to hear a real Alexa horror story? Sure. Alexa answering, uh, I'm sorry, my microphone is off. I can't hear you. Wait, what? Person turned off, like, turned off the, uh, their Alexa's microphone so it shouldn't be able to hear them anymore. As a way of just showing the, hey, see, you can put in, like, a standby mode, and it won't spy on you, oh, whatever. So it should so, know to make a complaint about it. Yeah, like, so, knowing that it's missing something. So the Alexa, you know, shouldn't be able to hear people talking. And then they said, okay, Alexa. And Alexa says, I can't hear you. My microphone is off. Yes, I can see why that would be a concern. Apparently, uh, Alexa's just pop, like, responding to something out of nowhere is actually a very common thing. Like, someone will yell in the street and the Alexa will be all like, I'm sorry, I don't understand, or something. An item will fall over and the Alexa be like, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Yeah, apparently it's just common. <laughs> I mean, I've but, heard stories of people's pets learning to uh, make Alexa do something. Cinnamon. Speaking of pets, the other, uh, what, trinket sign-in bonus that I'll be getting from this internet fighter is like a home security camera. So I'll be able to apparently keep an eye on uh, little cinnamon when I'm out and about. I have no idea on how like good the security on the security camera is if other people or if the ISP would be able to just, you know, use it. So I have to find out like the exact make and model that I'm getting to be able to learn. Okay, would they be able to just you know, see my living room at all times. <laughs> uh. Cause despite the 1000 plus videos uh, to the contrary, I quite enjoy my privacy. Actually, I believe the 1000 plus videos agree with that. Cause in all of those videos, there's no camera. <laughs> The audience cannot see me! Privacy? What's that? Uh, privacy? Thanks. Oh, 
Oh, also I finally got around to actually trying out the Nintendo Switch uh, N64 online mode. Where, you know, you can basically emulate N64 games on a Switch. There's a okay. bug with it that I'm surprised hasn't been fixed. Oh. And I looked online to try to find a solution. I found a solution, but a lot of people have had this issue. Um, if you go to play a game... Uh, once you, like, go into the game, your controller will start to vibrate. It will not stop. Oh. Some people are saying it's only if you use third-party controllers, but other people are saying, it's like, no, it's happening with, like, official Nintendo-made controllers. Uh, I think it's, like, everything other than Joy-Cons. I think it is. Ah. So if you use a controller to play, I think it's... I don't think I've heard someone saying it with Joy-Cons or with the official, like, Nintendo 64 but made for a Nintendo Switch controller. Because that's what they want you to use when playing N64 games. Buy another new controller for it. Okay. But yeah, you have to turn off Rumble. And some people are theorizing, no, that's just how N64 games are, with how the Rumble Pack works. As I understand it, yeah, I mean, basically, if, if you have the Rumble Pack, it assumes it's active. In the N64. Yeah, so trying to control in the games was a little bit awkward. But also, I have all the materials and stuff that I need to just actually uh, record flat out off of my N64. <laughs> oh. I don't necessarily have all the games that Nintendo Switch... Nintendo 64 Online for the Switch has for the N64. But I have some games. <laughs> so... Nintendo who knows? 64? Yeah, <laughs> Nintendo Switch D4, yes. So maybe one of these days I'll just bring out my N64, plug that all into my capture card, and just start playing like that. Yeah, why not? Well, why not is because I'd be subject to the whims of the N64. Which might or might not be, um, reasonable demands. <laughs> I remember years and years ago, I had gotten the Mario Party games for N64. And so I invited some people over to, you know, play some Mario Party together. And I think we tried each of the games, and they all wound up crashing before we could finish playing. We get like, I think like seven or so turns in and the game would just crash. So, you know, not exactly a good sign. Also, <laughs> I don't know if it's available on Tabletop Sim or anything. I would hope that it is. But I kind of really want to play uh, Lord of the Rings Risk again. 
I knew that was going to happen. Why I'd go for that anyway? Uh, just because I'm really, really good at that game. I think it would be really funny to uh, have a whole thing set up of doing a proper recording of Lord of the Rings Risk. Only for me to win in like two turns. Hey, Zoe, you want to do some Lord of the Rings Risk play day? No. Do you? Kind of. Oh. You can play the, the good team. And which team is the good team? You know, the, the elves, the humans, the halfling, was it? Hobbits. We may get to start in the Shire. Keflings? No. No Keflings in Middle-earth. Oh. I should double check to see if that Kepling scheme is available again. It's a real shame that the VR Kepling scheme has such bad reviews for it. It could be fun to play uh, Keflings. God. I just know that I've wasted so much of my time in the past playing Keplings. It's a game that only takes like four hours to beat, at least, you know, for two people who don't really know what they're doing. It really shouldn't take that long. It really shouldn't have spent, you know, dozens of hours on it, but I did anyway, because what else was there to do? Have a social life? Outside of school? Psh, as if. I mean, I know what you mean. It's, I mean, you don't even have one now. Hey, I'll, I'll let you know. I have, like, two friends. And I just recently went out to play D&D. &D. D, D doesn't count as a social life. <laughs> I, I literally had someone in my apartment, like, yesterday. I made like. <laughs> oh, also, speaking on the matter of stuff and things, so I went to pick up my uh, Estradol and found, oh, the prescription has run out. Okay, it's like, oh, we can fax your doctor to refill it. So I'm like, alright, cool. Uh, please do that, thank you. And that was like last week. So I went in there on Tuesday when I went for groceries. It's like, oh yeah, they haven't uh, responded to us yet. I'm like, oh, that's weird. And the pharmac pharmacist suggested that I call the doctor and see what's up. Alright. So yesterday, uh, Wednesday, while I'm doing all of my calling stuff, I called the doctor's office. Turns out that the pharmacy only faxed in on Sunday. And the doctor hadn't been in yet. Or had been, like, super busy the past few days. Ah. And so hadn't been able to get to it. And it's like, okay, if the pharmacy waited all the way till Sunday for it, I can understand why the doctor didn't have it. <laughs> and yeah, no sent it back. It's like, okay. Uh, oh, but it's also been, you know, two years since my last actual appointment. And it would probably be nice, you know, to get another appointment to... Maybe get some blood work done, make sure that levels are working and all that. Because two years ago I had made a follow-up appointment and I have no idea what happened to that. Never got any messages or emails about that or anything, so I guess that appointment was disregarded or something. At least I think I made an appointment while I was there with you. So, I booked an appointment... Next availability is late January. <laughs> yes. But since it's been two years since my last appointment, I might count as a new patient, which means I might need a new referral. So the person working the desk of the of the doctor, of the endocrinologist, uh, will let me know if I need a new referral. And also let me know when my endocrinologist like, sends back in the facts 
so I can go and pick up my medication. <laughs> yeah, so medication's kind of important. All I just know is that pre-surgery is very important that I stop it by a certain time, but post-surgery they di didn't really care if I started back up on it. Ah. Yeah, the notifications like, oh, like, such and such number of weeks before surgery, make sure you stop taking Advil. Such and such many weeks, make sure to stop the spironolactone. It's like, by this day, make sure you stop taking, like, the estradol. Okay, what about after surgery? Eh, well, I mean, don't have to take the spironolactone anymore. Okay, what about estradol? Yeah, we'll let you know. <laughs> and they kind of never did, but I'm hoping two years is enough time. I don't know. My endocrinologist... <laughs> Uh, didn't have an answer for me. Weird. Yeah, so I just kind of said, screw it. I want to take the estradiol again. Yeah, I wanted to do a recording of one specific game that I on the N64, which is why I, you know, booted up the was it Nintendo Switch D4 online. But the vibration made that game basically unplayable. And <laughs> so I had to abandon like a recording halfway through. Maybe I'll do it again just to mess around with the uh, cheated in characters. I don't know if the nin if this version will allow the cheats to work. And if it doesn't, I'll have to bring out my old N64. I still remember something about 10 plus years ago. It was just, like, in storage in a shed, and I had to, like, climb in to, like, dig it out. And ever since then, I've just not put that thing back in storage. <laughs> it's always just been sitting there, maybe plugged in, maybe not plugged into the TV, but it's always just, you know, been there, like, ready to be played on. Um, there is something really to be said about consoles allowing for, you know, a group fun experience um, standalone like that. Like, if you just have some friends over and you have, like, an N64, you'd be all like, hey, let's just play Smash. None of y'all need anything. And it's like, all the host even needs is just extra controllers, but then everyone can, you know, play the game together. And gaming was not really quite like that for a little while. The, around the PS3 and Xbox 360 era, it more so started to turn into maybe you could play locally with one other person, but for four player you needed to go online. More so. But now that the Switch is out, I think the Nintendo Wii had it as well, where, yeah, no, you can just play with multiple people. That's fine. Oh, by the way, that reminds me. Did you hear the news today? Uh-oh. Oh, but are they releasing the Switch too? Apparently there'll be official talk about that in June. So they have officially stated that there will be official news about that in June. Cool. Do you think you're going to get a, 
a Switch 2? I don't know. I mean, I barely use my Switch as it is. Yeah. If I can transfer all of, like, the games I downloaded off of, like, Nintendo Switch Online onto it without hassle, I probably will. I don't want to say definitely, because I've seen how scalpers go for new consoles. Uh, circa PlayStation 5. And, like, I'm probably not going to pay $1,000 for, you know, a launch release Switch 2. <laughs> yeah. Usually, when it comes to uh, consoles, I like to wait until some game comes out that I really want to play on it. Then I get the console. <laughs> and usually not just one game, but like three or four games come out that I really want, and I go, okay, now it's worth it. Like, I think for the Switch itself, it was uh, Breath of the Wild I, that I wanted to play. I actually bought my first Nintendo Switch uh, off of eBay. And I didn't realize the Switch was supposed to have touchscreen, and that one didn't. I got a Did decent price for off. it, but I had to buy uh, Joy-Cons and games separately. Probably got a good price for it, because the touchscreen doesn't work. Did you buy it on, like, eBay? Yeah, eBay. Ah, uh, yeah, well, that's probably why. Yeah. I was thinking if you bought yourself a knockoff or something. Nope. Official Nintendo Switch plays the cartridges and stuff. It was just uh, a little bit broken. And then it, you know, broke all the way one day, either from a cat peeing on it or from being kept in my purse in minus 40 degree weather. <laughs> Why would you do that? I was going over to visit family during the Christmas time, and I went on the bus. It's not like it stayed out there for hours, but it did stay at, like, below zero for a fair while, because I don't have thermal heating inside my purse. But it's probably more the liquid damage that really messed it up, because the yeah, right Joy-Con just that could not... Thought, but still. Because the right Joy-Con was never able to connect properly, and then the thing could just never actually turn back on again. And there is no one in town that can fix a Nintendo Switch. And apparently uh, no one in Edmonton either. Yeah. Yeah. So I wound up getting was a Switch Lite. And that was all fun and games and stuff, but then I wanted to record on the Switch, and my old one was still broken, and it's like, for the price of repairing it, I could just get, like, a... I could just get another new Switch. So I'd have to repair it, and get a dock, and yada yada yada, so I got a new Switch that was, like, I think it was sold from, like, Best Buy? It's either sold... From Best Buy or from actually Nintendo.ca. <laughs> I got the Animal Crossing one. It was like uh, an open box model, so it's like 10% off. <laughs> open box, but hadn't actually been used. Came with a fancy Animal Crossing dock, which I then went and immediately put stickers on. All that good stuff. So what you're saying is you ruined it. Ruined what? By putting the stickers on it. No, no, I just put stickers on the dock. I didn't actually put stickers on the Switch itself, no siree. There's no way I'd put stickers on the Switch itself. That would be bad sticker placement. Yes. Yes, it would be.
I wonder what launch styles the Switch 2 might have, because Tears of the Kingdom is still relatively new. Do you think that Zelda could go back to having, like, traditional style Zelda games, or have they kind of shot themselves in the foot with the Breath of the Wild Tales of the Kingdom games? I mean, I really hope they go back to that style, because um, otherwise I'm probably never buying a Zelda game again. Because, like, Super Mario Wonder still runs, I think, off of, like, the basic uh, Super Mario Bros. like, playstyle. Although, to be fair, the original Zelda game was an attempted open world with dungeons type game. They were just, you know, limited to hardware and stuff. We got what three pharmacy levels so far? Oh gosh. Do you think there's time left in the episode for me to gripe about um, mandatory tools in Rune Factory 1 and 2? Okay, so like in Rune Factory 4, if you want to get like an extra watering can, you can just make a watering can. If you say, uh, think that you don't need a sickle anymore, maybe you're running low on space and you don't think it's important, whatever, if you don't want one, you can just, you know, toss it or sell it, and then if you want a new one, you can make a new one. Moon Factory 1 and Moon Factory 2, spots of your limited inventory have to be filled up with each of your tools and also the sp specific few bottles that you get to have for potions. Potions being a specific body slot that then have to be refilled after you use them, Instead of just being items that you can fully craft as many of, or as few of as you want, is really flippin' annoying. Like, say, when you have to do a boss fight, or especially a boss rush challenge. Hey, Rune Factory 2, you get three potions. So, it's like, okay, well, the most a potion can do is fully heal you. So you get basically four health bars. Oh, infinite food, because you can craft as much food as you want, but you can only have three potions. And, well, if you don't particularly want to go the route of, you know, cooking up a whole bunch of food, well, screw you. You have three potions, period. If you don't want any potions because, I don't know, your playstyle doesn't use potions, screw you. Three potion bottles still fill up three slots of your inventory. You know, assuming you actually have gotten them. Clearly you have two. I have two because the third one is taking up a slot in my inventory in my uh, cupboard. Or my uh, fridge, one of the two. But it's like, I have so many, like, tools and stuff, and so little, like, storage space in the character house, that pretty much all of the storage space is being used up before I can start putting in seemingly mandatory stuff, like each different type of four. There's not enough storage space to store all of the tools and stuff, plus one of every resource. So, like, especially if you say, oh, you want to grind for a, a resource or whatever, like, you want to hold on to like a bunch of gold because you want to use gold for doing a bunch of crafting? Well, joke's on you. You can't.
You want to try to farm a whole bunch of something? It's like, look at this. Tool, tool, tool. I might be able to sell this sword. I'm not sure. Tool, tool. This used up a slot. This fishing rod. I don't need the fishing rod anymore. I wish I could sell it and then maybe make a new one if I do decide to use fishing. But no, takes up a slot. Missing page one. What is it good for? Could I possibly get another one? There's no price on it. Don't think I could sell it. Magic books. Those take up slots. Take up slot. Take up slot. Take up slot. This magic crystal I could toss. Red scarf, though. Looks like I'm going to have to keep that in my inventory. All this stuff. Mandatory spots filled. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19 items. 19 items in my shelf out of 30 spaces are mandatory must stay in must stay in there. More than half of my shelf space is used up by mandatory items that I don't even necessarily want. The fridge, at least I have a bit more room. I can't store everything that I'd like to. But I can at least store a few things in here. Like a bit of the honey. But when I was, you know, gathering uh, large milk and large eggs from the farm animals. Well, it's a good thing that you can upgrade uh, the storage at the school to hold on to things. And those storages got filled with milk, eggs, and yarn. <laughs> Before I actually even got the clovers to make the levelizers. Which even then, those had to start using up space. Perfect. Next episode, I'm sure we'll do even more of the pharmacy before actually getting back to our original plot of growing flowers in a dungeon. Just another thing that just wants to use up a bit of time, but huh, so be it. <laughs>